Hello. This yoga class, you'll need two blocks and your mind. So coming to a seated position, arriving on your mat, petting your dog, if available. Allow the sits bones and tailbone to ground down into the mat. Rolling the shoulders, embracing some gentle micro movements to welcome yourself in this space. I'm going to take some time today to work with the breath for a variety of different practices, which in Sanskrit are called pranayama. So as we center in now for this, for this time, begin to invite all the thoughts, all of the to-do list items to make their way out or to move on from your mind stream. And just see if you can breathe into a walnut-sized area of space around the base of the tailbone. Visualizing a small level of light and breathing deep down into the root. Hands can remain on the lap, facing upward or downward. People find that palms down provides a bit more of a rooting, grounding, introverting awareness. And people tend to find the palms facing up, providing an activating, energizing, of experience. Keep visualizing that deep point or destination for your inhale and then letting it out. Create a second point and focus on the midpoint of the spine around the belly. So again, you can either think of it as the belly or the midpoint of the spine, same thing. And breathing down to the root and up to the belly. Exhaling from the belly, down to the root. Inhale, belly to ribs. Exhaling from the ribs, down to the belly. On the next inhale, add your third focus point at the very top of the ribs, the chest, the sternum. For the third part, this dirga pranayam, inhaling belly, ribs, chest, exhaling from the chest, the ribs to the belly. Inhaling from belly to ribs to chest. Exhaling chest, ribs, belly. A couple more rounds of Dirga Pranayam. invite you to visualize those three circles of light or three points to help guide you as you breathe. One at the belly or deep in the root of the body somewhere, one at the ribs or the midpoint of the spine, and one towards between the shoulder blades and or at the chest between those three general areas, activating your three-part breath. Noticing if there's any shift in your awareness at this time. Some of the benefits of this breath include reduced blood pressure, increased 
focus. An introversion of the attention, bringing the attention inside to the emotional inner landscape. So keeping that three part pattern, I invite you to add a small constriction in the back of the throat as the breath makes its way out through the three part pattern, sort of like an H sound. Maybe if we were all in the group, your neighbor in the mat, one mat over from you would hear it. So inhaling belly, ribs, chest gently through the nose. And then with that H sound, exhaling chest, ribs, belly. Inhaling normally through the nose, belly, ribs, chest. And with that full balloon of air, exhaling with a slight constriction, chest, uh, ribs, belly. That little drag on the exhale. We're able to bring the senses in even more. We begin oxygenating our cells down to the cellular level, the blood, all the tissues of the body. And this version of the breath is called Ujjayi or ocean breath. So I invite you to drop the ocean breath now and just keep with that three part breath, belly, ribs, chest, chest, ribs, belly. And now as you inhale, belly, ribs to chest, I invite you to cover up one nostril if it's available to you and exhale through the other nostril. Inhaling normally through the nose if possible. And then exhaling through the opposite nostril this time, covering the other nostril. Inhaling through both nostrils, belly, ribs, chest. Covering one nostril, exhaling through the open nostril, chest, ribs, belly. Inhaling normally through both nostrils, belly, ribs, chest. Exhaling through one nostril, chest, ribs, belly. This is a modified Nadi Shodhana or channel purifying breath. So continue that pattern, covering one nostril at a time for your exhales and using the three parts. Now, if you have sinus congestion or any other issues blocking your nostrils from working well for this practice, feel free to drop it altogether and feel free to just imagine the air or the energy flowing uh, through your channels. And that's also fine. Um, I modified it as well uh, because I find this to be a really approachable way to start doing all nostril alternations, but there's actually a whole s sequence of nostril play that the um, Vedic yogis talked about and used. And so this is just a very easy, breezy, and fun modification on Nadi Shodhana. And it's said that we have a central channel of energy going down the body and called the Sushumna. And then there's these two Nadis, the, um, two um, channels of energy, sort of like nerve endings that go up the length from the sinuses sort of all the way down in the body. Um, they're called the nadis. And there's a sort of a lunar side and a solar side to them. And um, by balancing the two hemispheres, 
we're balancing everything in us that is hemispheric, including the brain, the consciousness. So I invite you to continue with one of these three patterns. The three part breath, the ocean breath with the audible exhale, or the alternate nostril exhale. And so we're actually going to have five more minutes of pranayam while I play for you on the end pin. And just notice what happens as you take part in this pranayam. No need to force, no need to exert effort on these breathing practices since you're sustaining for a longer time. Simply choose which of the three techniques you'd like to be with and sort of keep that in mind as you breathe and as you listen. And feel free to switch as well at any time.
whatever seated position you're in, sweep the arms out and up on the inhale. Exhale, hands down to prayer. Inhale, sweep out and up. Send the gaze up, grow the arms, grow the spine, exhale down. And inhale, sweep out and up. See if you can get one millimeter taller every time. Exhale, one palm down to the mat. And stretch over to the side. Inhaling both palms back up. Exhaling down to the other side. Keeping the sits bone and tailbone nice and grounded here. And just inviting that deep opening stretch to the side body here. The elbow does not need to come down to the mat whatsoever, unless you want it to. It could be as simple as this. down to the knees, putting the feet flat in front of you, mats width distance apart, hands behind the sacrum to support the back, exhale down to the right side, inhale knees back up to center, exhale both knees down to the left, inhale back up to center, and continue. choose to bring as you roll to the left your right arm around and over to give yourself a hug reaching for the shoulder blade and on the inhale bringing the hand back down to the sacrum exhale reach around to the shoulder blade inhale back to the center exhale to the left wrap touch the shoulder blade back to center more times at your own pace. Really massaging the glutes here, turning to your side, reaching down, maybe going down to your left side of your hip, your left elbow, rolling onto your back, bringing the knees into the chest, here, doing some micro movements to massage the sacrum, little knee circles, and let the feet rest on the mat with the knees bent. Bring the arms out to a T with both palms facing the sky sort of like, almost like a thumbs up position, but flush to the floor. Take one of your hands and actually rotate it so that it's more of a thumbs down shape. Again, the fingers can be relaxed, but you have your thumbs pointing in opposite directions. One hand palm down, one hand palm up. And on your exhale, reverse the palm that's facing up with the palm that's facing down and alternate here. Noticing the shift in the palms, noticing the shift at the level of the elbow, noticing the shift at the level of the spine, well, of the shoulder blade, bringing both palms up, crossing the right foot over the left knee. Reaching inside that gap, that triangle here, for the hamstring. Well, some people might even reach for the shin here. And not really using the core so much as gently inviting the hamstrings to open. As you invite that bent knee my left knee closer to my sternum. Uh, 
Exhale, both feet back down to the mat, knees stay bent, and switch. Crossing the ankle over the thigh, reaching through the legs to the thigh or to the chin. And invite that hip opening, hamstring opening on the other side here. Next exhale, keeping the legs crossed in this way, in this figure four kind of shape, grounding the heel, right heel in this case, down to the mat. See if you can invite a deeper cross, perhaps, with the left calf crossing over the right thigh, or you're welcome to keep this figure four shape if it's available to you. You might even wrap the toe around the calves for a double wrap. I'm just going to go with a single wrap like this, making sure the hips as this bones are aligned to the ceiling and you're not twisting anything. Then bringing the arms up from the T-shape, crossing the right arm under the left, hugging yourself here for a moment and feeling this pretzel shape Holding yourself in the supine twist. Your next inhale, see if you can bring your forearms to be parallel to each other, pointing towards the back of the wall. And you may find that you'll stay hugging yourself. You may begin to bring the hands together or Keeping the elbows parallel to the shoulders, you may eventually clasp the palms together for supine karadasana eagle. And for a little bit of core engagement, you can point the toes and bring the knees up in the air, or you can keep the one foot resting on the mat. Keeping the neck and shoulders relaxed. Engage in the core for supine karadasana eagle. So unspooling the arms and the legs. Come to supine windshield wiper here for a moment. Bring some vacillation of the knees and hips. Gently swinging them left to right. back up through the center, lifting that right heel up, crossing through to figure four, as I like to call it, four sort of four shape, triangle shape cross. Um, the right ankle is over the left thigh, and you may stay here in this shape, or you may cross the calf past the point of the left knee or some folks may reach that right knee over the left knee all the way around the right left calf and double wrap that toe. I'm just gonna stick with the single wrap here. And then taking the left arm under the right arm, my left arm is closer to my belly button. I'm gonna hug myself here and just take a couple of breaths in a deep bind here, really comforting myself, keeping the core engaged, the mula bandha as it's called, although not locked, just sort of present. Inhale, begin to float the hands up, keeping the elbows intertwined, seeing if you can bring your forearms parallel to each other, 
parallel to the earth. And if that's available to you, you might see if your hands might come together, palm to palm, or the inside of the fingertips to the palm. And if that's available, all available to you, you could stay there, or you could bring the feet off the earth. Engage the core here for supine Garudasana Eagle. So again, left arm under the right arm, left foot, left leg under the right leg for three more breaths. Releasing just the arms to a T. Palms face up towards the sky. Take your Garudasana legs with that right toe leading you to the left and your gaze turning gently to the right. Both shoulder blades glued to the floor. Turn to the left and you may choose to put a block if you want under your Garudasana leg. And you may also nudge your hips just a couple of centimeters to your right as you turn to the left. So you may turn all the way to the left, keeping both shoulder blades down. Explore your Bharadasana supine twist. Twisted supine eagle. Feeling a melty, twisty sensation from the tip of the left toe all the way up to the right pinky, and from the right pinky toe all the way to the left thumb. Spreading the fingertips, spreading the arms, keeping the gaze to the right, keeping the shoulder blades glued down, and just playing, just playing at the level of the hips, knees, and legs. Inhale gently back to center. Switch the direction of the legs. Gazing to the left, both shoulder blades down. Begin to sink that left toe now, gently down towards the floor for twisted Garudasana leg, supine position. Now I don't recommend Garudasana arms in this case, because it would be really difficult to keep your shoulder blades on the ground if you were to do a twist in the arms. But for more vigorousness, you could bring your legs towards the full Garudasana leg twist, perhaps. Um, or not, or just sort of melt into the spinal twist here and enjoy. And breathe. Notice the opening in the elbow joints, the shoulder blades, the rotator cuff, the external side body, obliques, the spine. Really undoing a lot of the movement patterns that we develop by sitting at computer asana on our desks. <laughs> Inhaling back to center, both feet come to the mat. Rolling to your left, pushing down through, or either side really pushing down through the hands coming up to seated. I actually suggest that you spin the heels back to come set on the knees. You're welcome to put a block right here in between the feet so that you can come back and rest the tailbone on it. Or Vajrasana or Lightning Bolt Pose. And we're actually going to learn the fourth breath work technique for today. All those yoga postures were just a distraction. Ha ha ha. Um, so, Taking a moment with the palms up or down on the lap and integrating all these movements that we just did. They were not a distraction. 
did some supine work on the mat. Some spine opening, hip opening things. I'm really starting to see this as being a really good break from computer time for people. And so however this practice is starting to feel for you, where you're feeling an opening, where you're feeling a change in your body, maybe you've added a few little practices into this practice. Just recognize that now. And we'll do the fourth pranayama now. And it will require us to go back to the very beginning of class when we were breathing into the root. So visualizing that little point here in the, in the root, sort of in the belly, or lower dantian, as they call it in uh, Qigong. You can go ahead and put both hands there as well, actually. And just feel an inhale go in there. And then let's play with a percussive and fast exhale through the nose from the belly. So in, nice half the way inhale, and then a little jolt of an exhale through the nose. So you may want to get some, pause this video and get some Kleenex. Um, some people tend to have little rockets fly out during this pranayam, which is which is fine. But wherever you are, taking a nice deep inhale, a nice relaxed exhale. Inhale halfway. Let's try a couple of these. You know, my dogs make these noises when like they're getting ready to bark at something when they're kind of suspicious, but it's on a full bark, and they kind of go. So you can think of it that way. You can also think of it as if there were a candle in front of your nostrils birthday candle and you wanted to blow it out but you didn't have a mouth, only nostrils. Either way you should feel a little movement in the belly. You should not really feel any tension in the throat or the chest or any of this. So the speed and intensity are up to you. Find something appropriate to your energy level right now in your body. So let's take 30 rounds, about 30 rounds of Kapalabhati or skull polishing breath together. Nice deep inhale, nice deep exhale. Inhale halfway. Oh wait, and so there's no inhale, sorry. There's no, there's no active inhale. So you'll notice as you do these sharp exhales, um, you'll just take in oxygen between the exhales. This is really all you have to worry about. So, inhale three quarters of the way and begin. Sing that breath. Kapalabhati is often called skull polishing breath as well because it really clears up and around past the occiput and the neurocranial region and it really clears the prana around, out and around the back and through the nose. So come to a standing posture now. Feet hips width distance apart. Rolling gently up the stand. You might take some micro movements here in the shoulders. You might rotate your trunk from left to right, allowing the shoulders and arms to become like jello for this warm up called empty coat sleeves. And I'll offer you 
one balancing pose. Take tree pose. Bringing one heel to your ankle, to your calf below the knee, or to the thigh above the knee. I'll go with my calf today. And for a moment, anchoring the hips and shoulders and body all forward to the short side of your mat. Find a stable point on which to fix your gaze for the next five breaths. Rooting down through all four corners of the supporting foot. Finding your length from the base of the heel to the crown of the head. Noticing any sensation in your body, any wobbles, working with them, embracing them fully, allowing your body to co-regulate itself. with the stimulus that you're offering it. And so release the foot, hands back to the hips if you choose, rooting down through the opposite foot, finding lightness in the other foot this time. Go ahead and bring your heel to the ankle or the calf below the knee or the thigh above the knee, whichever one you choose, really opening up the hips as much as you can and feel comfortable opening those hips to frontwards towards the short side of the mat. The shoulders relax, the head right stacked above the spine. Hands on the hips, or hands to Anjali Mudra. Perfect Shasana tree on the other side. Oh yeah, or you can grow your branches. Just a little balance. This type of coordination and balance is really supported by the breath work um, practices that we integrated at the beginning of class. And you'll find that actually from side to side as well, you may have different needs in terms of balance. So while we try to keep everything symmetrical, you know that it's also possible as well. And if all of this is really easy, you can try to eventually close both your eyes and treat those. I think it's really hard. <laughs> so release, check it out. And we'll do one last pranayama technique for today from the Taoist tradition called the microcosmic orbit. So the microcosmic orbit is based on the principle. So you'll stay standing and come to Tadasana with the feet hips with distance apart, heels stacked on, um, right hips with distance apart, right under the knee, all four corners of the feet rooting down into the earth, all four corners of the knee joint stacked directly on top of the shin bone, not locked out, but just tall and supported, rooting all the way up to the hips. The shoulders are neutral and relaxed, the head is gentle, and the arms and shoulders are gonna be pretty fluid and jello-like, I have to say. And we're gonna inhale, sort of like you're underwater. Bring the arms and hands and elbows and wrists up to about shoulder height. Exhale, palms face forward. And gently wash the hands down till the backs of the palms are resting in front of you. Inhale, gently sweep the arms up, palms face out. Exhale. As slowly and gracefully as possible, sweep the arms all the way back down, palms facing the back wall. So as we inhale, imagine that we're drawing in water through the front of our body, perhaps, and as we exhale, just like if you were taking a shower, if you dumped a bucket of nice warm water over your back, it will wash over your spine. So inhale, breathing in, drawing up water, like a stalk of celery in a glass, and on the exhale, trickling it down from the occipital ridge down the cervical spine, down the thoracic spine, down the lumbar spine, down to the tailbone, out and away. Inhale, 
soaking it in, allowing it to permeate as the chi travels up the front body. And exhale, allowing it to drip, drizzle, gush all the way down. And you can begin to play with the feet as an origination point here. And crown of the head. Inhale the chi up from your toes. Exhale out the crown of the head and down the back to the heels or Achilles tendon. Make sure to not lock out the knees here. Really bathe yourself with the chi, get creative with the movements. Nice and slow. See if you can begin to visualize that circle. Of prana or chi from the front of the toes. Inhale into the crown of the head. Exhale into the occipital ridge and to the Achilles tendon. Recognizing the circularity of this pattern and the repetition of this pattern is an orbit in the same way that atoms and molecules orbit the subatomic particles, electrons all move in their ways of planets orbit and everything in between. micro cosmic orbit. You can introduce a gentle bend of the knees, just a tiny bend if you want. You can bring the feet hips with distance apart or even a tiny bit more. No need to be too precise about the hands and arms. See how fluid and slow you can be. Notice how much sensation you can allow yourself to feel. Cosmic orbit. Technically, this is the yin cycle. Inhaling, reaching the arms all the way up, point the palms up to the ceiling. And on the exhale, gently release the arms and hands down. And release the chi, send it all back down to the earth. And go ahead and send your body back down to the earth as well. Now I invite you to take Shavasana or rest in whatever way feels good for you today. And so I wish you the best on the remainder of your journey today. And I'll see you next time.